I got an email from uh, Greg Brent Manorino. I'm on his uh, mail list. And as I've shown in past <coughs> videos, I am, I, I personally believe that selling puts, selling put options is a great way to replace the, the lack of savings rate on savings. So if you have money sitting in a bank account earning 0%, even if it's earning 1%, you can sell a put option and earn 5 to 10% on a very safe transaction. And you can get very aggressive. You can take greater risk and get your returns. I mean, it's possible to get returns up to 20, 25% per trade. And yeah, the yeah. only thing I would say to that is, yeah, you know, barring, you know, make sure, you know, you choose a, a decent strike, but, but by and large, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the strike is the strike and the duration is yeah. what determines your risk mm -hmm. and your return. Right. So here, yeah. I'm going to go right into window theta. Yeah. I'm going to go right into the sharing the screen here. Hey, I, first of all, Hey, I applaud the guy for I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the guy is doing this for the benefit of others <clears throat> trying to help people. So I, I commend him for that. And, um, but the one thing that I don't understand and, and I agree with, and I agree with him that, uh, I agree with him that selling puts is a great way to, to basically make residual money to make returns in a very safe way. But the only thing that I want to comment is in the past, you know, Greg has been very bullish on precious metals, miners, and now cryptos, but I never see him recommending trades for those type of companies. He's always recommending these scumbag banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and yeah. Uh, Bank of America, <laughs> and I don't understand why he's not trading the miners right now because the miners are are now starting to trend up, and that's really the best time to sell puts is when a stock is trending up mm -hmm. because now you're selling a, an aggressive in the money put, and the price when it's rising, you now it expires worthless and you keep the premium. I'm going to read this email, Dan. Okay, so. Lions, I just sold JPM and he titles it free money, literally. Lions, I just sold JP Morgan, May 28th, $130 puts. If you ran this trade through an analyzer, you will see that this trade has 100% probability of profit. That is why I love selling puts. <clears throat> okay, so when I got this email, first of all, I'm not real. I'm not trading these banks, uh, number one. But I did go in and check it out. And Dan, I called you and asked you because I was out. I asked you to look at it. And what did you find when you plugged this information into the uh, into the trade? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, interestingly enough, when I went out to May 28th and I went to the $130 strike, I saw that if you were to sell a put. I guess against this, that it was paying uh, basically 0 0.06, right? Maybe 0 0.065. So, I mean, if that's the case, then what does what does that mean? That means let's say you sold um, a put position with one contract, right? One contract, as you all know, is a hundred shares. So. Um, 100 shares times a premium of, let's say, 0 0.06 for argument's sake, I believe is $6, right? However, um, at $130 with one contract, which is 100 shares, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, um, you know, uh, you, you're tying up, uh, you know, $13,000 to achieve a $6 premium on one contract. So if you did 10 contracts, let's say, because you want to um, achieve a premium of $60, okay, now you're like, okay, well, this is, you know, 60 bucks, I could pick up off the table. Okay, you, you could say that, but now 
you have to tie up $130,000 to pick up 60 bucks in premium. So um, that, that's, that's never really how I look at it. I always do an ROI. So I always determine, I always go six cents. Okay. Well, divided gonna, by $130. That's what I was, that's where I was going. I was going to say now to analyze it further, take 60 bucks divided by 130,000. That's a small number. I don't even think that's 1%, right? No, no, it's not even on the calculator. Yeah. So the whole point is, is when he titles this free money, literally, okay, free money to me, like you bend over and pick up a quarter, that's free money, okay? Mm -hmm. And most people today, if you will look on the street, most people don't even bend over and pick up a quarter well, anymore. That's a different story, but yeah. You know? So they really don't care about so are you going to put 13, the minimum you can bet is $13,000, one contract. So are you going to put $13,000 at risk to pick up $6? I wouldn't. He says it's 100% probability. There's no such thing. The banks could tank on Monday after you do the trade. And look at what happens here. The yeah. Basically, JP Morgan was at $80 yeah. a year ago. Yeah. What if there's a massive correction, a 20 or 30% correction, 40% correction? It could happen like it did last March, right? What was last March? 20, 30%, something like that? But to your point, you know, just what if there happens to be a correction? So to say 100%, I, I just, uh, I'm not sure I would go out on a limb and say that. Maybe 99.9 .9 or something, but. Well, I'm also, I'm getting a little frustrated with him because I don't know what his agenda is here. I don't know why he is constantly focusing on these banks and these scumbag companies. Well, I, I, I look, I, I don't know either. Maybe he's thinking and there is, there may be some practicality behind it. I mean, the reality is the banks for the most part over time are pretty much steady Eddie, right? In terms of, you know, the, the, uh, can you see the screen? I can. Yeah. Okay, so you can see. Look at where it was a year ago, all the way up to, all the way up to January. Yeah. So it's almost doubled. Yeah. Look at this. In January, it was 130 bucks. So it could fall back there, very quickly. It could. Yeah. No. 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 I totally agree. Yeah. So now you're going to put a 13 grand at risk to pick up six bucks. Okay. And again, what if there's a massive correction um, or a whipsaw? You know, the price is here and then boom, you know, usually with the whips, actually, it bounces back up. But yeah, you're right. I mean, a correction of some sort. I mean, there's never. What's rule, what's rule number one to selling a put? Rule number one. Well, you've got to be willing to uh, own the shares, right? No, more refined than that. Okay. You only sell puts in companies you want to own. Well, True. OK, you got to so, be prepared to so own if you think a company is a scumbag company or if you think a company yeah. is a crap price, yeah. then you don't sell puts on it. Absolutely. Yeah. You, and you, so that's what I'm frustrated with him is because the bottom line is, is, is if you truly believe that silver and gold and the miners are the way to go yeah. for some of these crypto companies, then yeah. why aren't you focusing on those? Yeah. Yeah. You put your money where your mouth is, right? How many times do I tell you your actions determine what you truly believe in? So, yeah, I could tell you I'm bullish on uh, silver and gold all day long, but then I never buy it. I agree. I agree. The, uh, the last thing I want to say is that a lot of the people following uh, Manorino's work. Mm -hmm. How many of those people have 13 grand to put towards one contract? I'm curious. Do, do people have 13 grand lying around in a uh, free, ready to use on one contract? <coughs> well, some of your intermediate, maybe to advanced traders do. But, but if you're talking about, you know, let's say the average bear across the entire U.S. spectrum, <clears throat> a lot of people can't with all due respect, you know, write a check for $500 or $1,000 in a case of an emergency. So I doubt they got 13 grand liquid cash sitting in an account. Most people don't. They don't, they're scraping by. 
So for you example, have- for example, last week, yeah. okay, in the, or last month, there are four trades that I that I turned you on to. Okay, first Majestic, yeah, CDE, mm-hmm. Metalla, Royalty and Streaming, mm-hmm. and then basically we were doing FSM together, which is Fortuna. Yeah. That's four miners and royalty companies that had premiums that were paying 25 to 100 <laughs> percent annualized return. I love it when you and talk. and the contract for for Fortuna. The contracts were seven hundred to eight hundred dollars per contract. Fortuna. Instead, mm-hmm. risk. Okay. Uh, CDE was nine hundred to a thousand. The um, Metalla was seven hundred and fifty to twelve fifty, mm-hmm. and First Majestic was anywhere from fourteen hundred to two thousand dollars, depending on what strike price. Yeah. And so you can buy a heck of a lot more contracts with out of those thirteen thousand dollars you could do you could do eight to ten contracts with first majestic or cde or the others some up to 20 contracts for that thirteen thousand dollars yes thank you and and get get around three four thousand dollars in premium versus six dollars so why aren't you why aren't you recommending those type of trades that would help people Yeah. And you're putting your money into these companies that are supposedly going like this. Well, yeah. Again, not in the person's head, et cetera, but maybe, maybe uh, certain people don't recommend that industry because they don't believe in it. I mean, let's face it. There's a certain amount of people that don't believe in the, in the precious metals, right? They don't see, they don't think it's practical anymore or whatever. I don't know. That, but that's not what he says. So he, he he does believe in the industry, yet he doesn't own anything in it. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying he doesn't own it. <clears throat> okay. If you listen to what I said in the opening, I said what I'm frustrated with is is a guy who says that he believes in this stuff, but mm-hmm. he never recommends in the trades. He never recommends a trade for those companies. Yeah, well, that's a good point. I mean, if you own some stuff, that, that would indicate uh, you would think that you believe in it, and therefore you would be willing to, maybe I shouldn't say recommend it, we're not advisors or anything, but, you know, tell your friends maybe and family or whatever about it, you know what I mean? Especially when the trades <clears throat> provide more income and more return than these crap trades with first uh, with uh, – Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Amen. I mean, look, I, I, based on what I know about this recommendation, I mean, you'd have to orchestrate, uh, you know, 50 of these to make any premium, you know, I mean, right. You know, I don't want to execute uh, 50 transactions if I could do it in one or two or three, whatever. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to me, but. Well, as if we talk about First Majestic and we we looked at this one after, if you go out to First Majestic for May 28th <clears throat> mm-hmm. and you just First Majestic closed at 16 bucks. So we we'll use something as simple as a $14 strike. It's two dollars below the strike. Got it. First Majestic is paying 10 cents on a $14 strike. So if I did 10 of those contracts, which is fourteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars, that's gonna offer a hundred dollars in premium. A lot more than six. And, you know, with a strike price of 14 versus the current price of six, right? A 16, that is. Um, <clears throat> you know, the chances. Uh, are you one week or two weeks out? Sorry. It's two weeks. Yeah. I mean, it, it could fall below 14, but um, I doubt it. Not gonna fall below. It's not gonna bo- fall below fourteen. I mean, at fourteen dollars, not unless not unless their mind blows up. Yeah, two two divided by sixteen is what one eighth. So I mean, you're giving yourself twelve and a half percent. That it would have to fall a total of twelve and a half percent or six and a quarter, a little over six week. It could, could well, could. could yeah, just like uh, we called up the chart on. Uh, <laughs> Just like but, it prob- but it probably wouldn't. The point is, if you look at the chart, you see where the resistance is. Yeah, well, I'll go to the chart right that. now. Yeah. I'll go to the chart right now. So you can, see, you can see the last. 
The last time that it, it, I mean, First Majestic uh, is is can be a volatile stock, but when it's on an uptrend, yeah, that's when you're willing to take on this volatility. And yeah. for, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. my computer. Yeah, no, I see your point, and I agree. I mean, if you're going to use that sort of a strategy to pick up uh, some free money, as you want to put it, um, off the table or the floor, or whatever, try to choose an appropriate strike price and get some appropriate premium. And oh, by the way, you got to be willing if you're going to sell a naked put. You got to be you willing. See this chart? To, you got to be willing to uh, own the stock. You know, like the stock, and you better make sure you've got the money in your account, right, to back it up, right. Well, I'm assuming people understand this already. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you don't understand this, then obviously this isn't going to yeah. be beneficial. Yeah. But the last time, the last time First Majestic was below fourteen dollars was on January twenty seventh. Yeah. At thirteen dollars and eighty nine cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you see here, uh, uh, bottom. So it's bottom since then one, two, three, like four or five times. So it's got support around. 14 bucks, it looks like. What are you talking about? The last time. No, no, up near 15. Oh, that's 15. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I, I mean, that all I'm pointing out is I could say that this, this is free money. Yeah, no, agreed. It okay. has to support at 15. Oh, so if somebody had, I mean, if I had a hunt, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. But if I had $100,000 and I had it in the bank, just earning nothing, well, the whole point is, is 10 cents. Even this is a ridiculous, I probably would never take this trade because we're talking 10 cents divided by 14. Okay, an annualized return is, it, it's like 18%, which is, you know, 18%. Who wouldn't take 18%, right? 18%. 10 cents divided by 14? Yeah, annualized. Oh, That's annualized. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, 18, yeah, 18%, 18 if you look at it that way, that now that's that's a good rate of return. Well, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. If you trade, if you own shares, you could be selling covered calls as an example, like I've been talking <clears throat> to you about trying to get you to do there. The yeah. you pick up you pick up a hundred bucks a week trading something. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks. I'm not gonna worry about it. Now you start figuring how much money you're trading it on in over 50 weeks. Now you're talking, well, actually, that's better than putting the money in the bank. Spot on. I mean, 100 bucks a week is 400 bucks a month. Yep. Yep. And it's a relatively safe way to go. Occasionally, markets do things that are unexpected. And so even if you take... That's why I said rule number one, trade on companies that you like and that you want to own. So if you had to buy these shares of First Majestic for $14, you know with pretty good certainty that you're going to get your money back, plus some. Mm -hmm. So you can turn around and sell a covered call on these and then make another X percent on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it's there's really, there's no guarantees of anything in life but this is a pretty, pretty good way to make money. So I totally agree. And it's fairly risk averse. It's fairly conservative move. But we want to stress, you know, I don't think we were comfortable and we would ever say, well, this is 100 percent. It's nothing's 100 percent. No, mean, you might not even be breathing next week. Yeah. Or tomorrow. Weekend. I mean, you might yeah, not so, I mean there's nothing in our, this world. So. But that's a fairly risk averse and conservative move to pick up some premium and stuff. And then, like you said, if it does fall below that, then you've got the shares with the company that uh, you're willing to own and you've, you've got. Well, here's an example. Here's an example. I just went over. I went over and uh, I brought some stuff back from Mexico for some friends. And I just went over their house and dropped it off. OK. And um, they told me they're selling their house. Oh, and they're wow. gonna what? OK. OK. Now they're, they're going to sell it for, we'll pick a number, uh, how about $800,000, okay? So they're going to have $800,000 going into their bank account. And they said the they're going to- paid do, off? Yeah. Yes, their house is paid off. Wow. So, um, so the bottom line is now you're going to have $800,000 sitting in the banks collecting 1%. 
or whatever it collects. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, that's. Well, no, they're excited about it. They're. Ex- yeah, they're like, oh, we'll be able to do this. I'd be like, there's better ways to put your money. That's only eight thousand bucks a year, one percent, and the banks aren't even paying that. What are they paying? Like point oh oh seven or something? Yeah, I'm sure you can get CDs now for one one or two percent, maybe. What a joke. One percent. Now, if, if it was the old days on 800,000 times, say around where CDs were paying six, you know, that's 48,000 a year you're generating an income just on the interest of 6%. Now, you know, now you're making a dent and you yeah. can live decently, uh, especially if you're retired, you know, taking your social security and other stuff decently, right? But 1%, that's eight grand a year. It's not, it's not even a grand a month, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how you know what government values your life at. Zero. Yeah. Zero. That's scary. Interest, interest is directly tied to your life force. Well, good point. So, you know, so even if they were throwing in a million, let's say, at 1%, 10000 a year, that's still not even a grand a month. And you had to throw a mill in there. Yeah. And that's tying up your mill. Exactly. Yeah. You know, through, you know. Yep. There are ways, um, there are ways, uh, there are strategies that you can adopt. That's why I recommend that people investigate looking how to sell put options. It is probably <laughs> one of, people hear options and they immediately like, well, that's how you stay poor. In this day and age, you know, it's the same people are like, crypto stink, crypto stink, it's 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 fool's gold, blah. blah. No, you gotta be open to everything these days. The bottom line is what's rule no, what's your top what's your objective with your money? Your my objective is to grow my wealth so that I can live the life I want to live. Make my money work for me. Because we already know the government's not you can't rely on government for anything or these banks or the stock market, nothing. You have to be your own, your own best advocate for your health, for your money, everything for your happiness. It's on you. You have the power. Even, even your love life. Yeah. Even your love life. Most people screw that up too. We'll do another video on that one. (laughs) I'm kidding. Yeah. So, I mean, this bottom line is, uh, you know, if people are, you know, th- there's there's some books on options that you can get uh, that are very beneficial. I've sent some books to people on this, but it's amazing how people because it's, it's kind of like reminds me when I was in uh, high school. I was like afraid to take a certain class because everybody talked about how hard it was. And then I took, it was physics in high school. And so I avoided it. I took biology, chemistry, and oh, instead of my option, I didn't take physics, but I took it in college. And then I, what I do for a living t- tied to physics directly. And I was like, what a dummy. I avoided exploring this. Absolutely. When, when I found that it was in my wheelhouse. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's right. I love it when you talk kinetic and potential energy. Yep. It's but, a tricky force. No, yeah, but well, seriously, absolutely. Yep. Well, physics, you know, unfortunately, what I didn't realize is physics, everything in everything in the universe, everything in our world ties back to physics. Absolutely. If you understand physics, <clears throat> you will, you, in my opinion, this is obviously my opinion, I think that you will understand more of everything in life because physics can translate to uh art and 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 even even um trading with the fibonacci because fibonacci sequence is in nature that's everything right and everything our nose the spacing our skin our thumbprints it's all fibonacci sequence okay. i'm a walking fib and i didn't know it yep yeah. yep yeah. so i mean all i'm saying is is when i was younger i let fear steer my life i was like oh no i'm staying away from that oh oh, i don't want to get near that now i'm like i i immediately am like why am i fearful and now i investigate that 
that maybe I need to invent, you know, explore this further. Yeah. Get educated on it and then peel back the onion, so to speak. And yeah. really, Hey, it's really not that bad. Yeah. I even think- what's been going on in the world over the last couple of years, like what's happening with the fed and the money supply. And now with this bull crap over the last year, I don't automatically believe what these people tell me. I do some research on it and I use common sense. Yep. You turn on the TV and you um, fire up CNN, you told me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a TV. So, and I never look at CNN online. So <laughs> I know I'm just being but, that. but here we're going to, unless I'll let Dan have the final word on this. And I, I just want to say, Hey, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm going to, you know, the bottom line is, 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 Anybody who's trying to help other people, I'm not going to um, bash them. But I do want to say that I've been watching this guy's trades and I have never seen one of his trade recommendations that I thought was helpful. Not Not one. one. Not one. Nope. Not one. And this one really, really made me angry. And you subscribe to his email or letter or whatnot? Yeah. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Well, um, I, I mean, I don't know what to say as a final word other than um, what you just said. I mean, if you've been subscribing for a while, emails, letter and all that, and you just said that you've never seen one recommendation or whatever suggestion idea that you would implement or act upon, that speaks volumes. I mean, that that's the final word. I mean, going by. No, he you- has. No, he talks about he talks about the benefits of cryptocurrency, of yeah. silver and gold, the miners but he has never translated that into an actual trade recommendation that he's done. Understood. That's the other part of it. That's true. That that's the other second part of it, I guess. That, that, uh, now I'm not going to say I've heard, I've heard people's chatter on this and I'm not even going to put it. People can put it in the comments on what they want to say. Like I said, I'm not here to bash the guy. But yeah. if he ever does watch this video, I would ask you, please, Greg, listen, I've sent you money as a donation because I've I've tried to support the energy that you have because I know that you you try to spread goodwill. But please try to help the common man like us who who is. Is I don't want to support the banks in any way. I don't even want to. I don't want to own shares of them. I don't want anything to do with them. So. That's all I have to say on that. Okay. Yeah. That's the final word. Makes sense. So, but uh, yeah, if you want to know more about selling puts, contact Dan. <laughs> For me. <laughs> Send a message. Uh, I strongly recommend. In any way, shape, or form. No, I strongly recommend. I, I tell uh, Dan, I, I you know how I feel about this. I think that. And Dan, you, you, you either agree with me or disagree with me. That's fine. I think that if you want to improve your financial position, tra- start learning how to trade uh, and sell puts. Sell puts is a very good strategy to start. I totally concur. I, I, think that- I do it myself. So that's why I agree. I mean, real simple, basic logic here. I do it myself. Dave does it. So we actually, as a result, we're doing it. To use Dave's, to use your words, Dave. I mean, yep. we're, we're actually putting it into action almost yep. every day. Yep. You know? And if we and and the but best time, yeah. And the best time to sell puts is when an when a market is tre- trending this way. Yes. You will make. You you, I won't say you know you will make um you, you can, can get more aggressive, and you when can, you get more aggressive, you get better returns. You can you can significantly do better returns. You can do pretty well. I will say that. And there's all different strategies inside it. So um, don't don't let your fear stand you in the way or say, well, I don't have time for that. Make time. Yeah, it's like anything, though, guys. You got to take the time, like he said. You got to carve it out. Get the book. Get a highlighter. You know, even if it's thirty minutes here and there, twenty minutes here and there, with a cup of coffee somewhere where it's quiet. I mean, you're talking about your financial future. I say this to my kids all the time, you know, uh, and I talk to them about finances and stuff and I kind of badger them here and there, but, but I want them to get financially educated as much as possible. I, I wish when I was 16, 18, 21, whatever that I had started then, 
because I would have had the massive, massive buffer of time. So for somebody who's 18, 20, 22, especially at that age, your synapses are firing like that. You can learn anything you want. If, if a couple of guys, old guys like us can learn, trust me, you don't have an excuse at 20 or 25. You really don't. I know yeah, you- and within three months, within three months of trading, you will actually be fairly proficient, right? Within three months, you will, you will with, uh, with daily practice, you, you, will, um, you will get a very, very strong comfort level. Yeah. And for young people, I, I'm telling you, if I had known this at 20 years old. Oh, big time. I would have been all over it at 2022. Dan and I would be on a remote island somewhere. We would be. Yeah, we would be. Um, you know, I, I took finance in college and stuff, and they briefly glossed over calls and puts, but they, they glossed over it in such a way and spent way more time on other stuff. You know, how to calculate internal rates of return, future value, present value, all that stuff. Okay, that's great. Um, if, you know, I guess if you're going directly into the industry for that, then that's fine. But, but, you know, mortgages, for example, uh, you know, IRAs, uh, you know, investing, um, you know, options like we're talking about. I mean, they don't, they don't, that's the stuff you need for the real world to survive, right? They, they, they don't do that. So financial education in general, in this country, in my opinion, is Severe, well, especially in the days, I mean, severely the days lacking, of, severely lacking. Yeah, the days of going to work for a conglomerate yeah. and retiring with them, uh, I'd say your chances are below five percent. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, that paradigm, unless you're working for the government. Spot on, dude. Spot on, bro. That paradigm has been crushed, and I, and I actually go back and forth with my folks on this as much as I love them. But you know, they they they're given like, for example, my kids' advice because they're the grandkids and they mean well. And so that part I'm, I'm cool with. I know they mean well, their heart's in the right place, but they're giving my kids like antiquated um, information and suggestions. And I'm like, mom, that paradigm's dead. Please don't push that on them because it doesn't work. It, you can't subscribe to that. It, it's gone. It's blown up. It's crushed. They're not going to go to a company at 23 and retire at 60 with a big fat defined contribution pension. It's, it's not happening in a 401k plan and, and then insurance and everything else. Yeah. That's long yeah. gone. It's dead. You got to be your own friggin' finance and bank guy. Now that's the world we've built. I don't know how else to put it. The banks won't tell you that they'll say, yeah, keep giving me the money. Cause what they do is when you stick your money in the savings account or what you might call it, um, checking account. Well, definitely savings, right? They're taking that money and in turn making money off it, loaning it, fifteen ways till Sunday. And their bank reserves now, I think, by law, are now what zero? Yeah, I don't. I really don't. I really think that there's a chance that a lot of these banks it's a great are going group. to be completely different within five years. I think that I think the whole crypto market's going to change the way we do banking. Absolutely. Okay, we've got we've got Cardano and Ethereum that are blowing up the contract markets, and um, and think about it. Look at how streaming music and movies has changed over the last ten years, five okay. years. And you know what I'm excited about? You may not be uh, for the music industry because I'm an amateur musician, uh, but for the pros out there that uh, do this for their bread and butter, butter. And, and and let's face it, guys, what would the world be like without music, right? Regardless of your genre. So the NFTs are coming for uh, the music artists. So I'm kind of happy about that to support them. So you can buy some NFTs for your, your, your favorite artist or whatnot and support them. And then at the same time, get a small sliver or a cut of that income as well. I mean, what's better than that when you're supporting your favorite artist or band, right? Yeah, it's uh, and that's what I was that's what I was talking about with uh, my buddy, Brian, is it's almost like creating your own token. Yeah, good point. I didn't think of it. But yeah, I guess you are in a way. Yeah, yeah. And you're supporting your favorite, like I said, band or, or artist. financing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because think about it. Uh, if you've ever if anybody's ever tried to write a song for fun, I have. It's brutal. It's so hard. And then put music to it. And wow, this sounds great. I mean, it's just not easy. These are truly talented people and they got to get compensated too, right? So anyway, whatever. I'm glad there's art and music in the world. I'll leave it at that. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, uh, everything translates to dollars and cents. 
in our yes. world. And so that's <clears throat> something that I didn't realize when I was younger because I was so busy focusing on my advancement in my career. <laughs> I never really thought much about money. I just put it into these stupid investments that turned into really weren't being maximized. Myself included, because the middle class and et cetera below, if you will, unlike the wealthy, they don't even discuss money half the time with their kids. They don't even bring it up. It's like a, a voodoo, a taboo. Oh, we're not going to talk about money. Well, the last time I checked, the entire planet in world revolves around economics and finance and, and money. Everything. Everything. Effect, money affects your life and lifestyle and amount of freedom you have or lack thereof, just to be Mr. Obvious, right? Well, I'll end it by saying, hey, um, Cardano, when we talked about it, Last week it was around a buck fifty. It's up to two fifty and uh, maybe climbing. So, <laughs> so we'll see. That's the one that uh, that's the one that looks like it's making a move, and uh, because there's a lot of positive news coming out on it. Baby. So, so we'll see. Okay, yeah. so that's that's all I have to say on that. Well said. Over and out. Ooh.